Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do this stitch. Um, and I have to let you know, this is the easiest stitch in the world. It's basically slip stitches. That's all it is. But um, to get this effect, what you do is that on one row, you um, grab the front loop of the stitch. So on one row, only the front loop of the stitch. And on the following row, you grab the back loop of the stitch. And that's all it is. It's a two row repetition. Uh, front loop of the stitch, the following row, back loop of the stitch. Front loop, back loop, over and over again. That's all it is. So it's super easy. Um, a tip though, um, so you don't freak out. Uh, you're gonna do this as per your measurements, right? So you're gonna follow the formula that I'm leaving you in the pattern, and that formula will tell you how many chains you have to do. When you do your chains though, uh, it, they're gonna be much larger than your chest diameter, it, but that is normal. It, the fabric is gonna shrink um, little by little, so this, the the first uh, chain here and the first rows are gonna look gigantic, uh, but then the more rows you do, the more the fabric will shrink, and at the end you'll reach your desired measurement. So don't worry about that. Um, so I'm gonna do a little sample this time because I already did my top and I don't really wanna do another one. So I'm gonna do a little sample uh, to show you how I do this stitch and. Um, I used a really large stitch, which is a number nine. Uh, and I use a really large stitch because, um, first of all, these are slip stitches and slip stitches tend to be really tight. So you do want a larger hook. And I also tend to crochet quite tightly. So I needed a, a really large hook. That said, this doesn't mean that you will use the same hook as me. Uh, you just need to follow the measurements of my gauge. And uh, so it's very likely that you're gonna use uh, an 8.5 or an eight, but the important thing is that you get the same measurements, uh, so the same amount of stitches and rows as I got on my gauge. And last tip, uh, when I do my chains, I always do my chains with a smaller hook. So in this case, I did these chains with um, this one, a five millimeter hook. So it's much smaller than the nine, uh, but that is because slip stitches shrink a lot, like I said. So if you do your chains with the bigger hook, then your chains are gonna be all like floppy, you know? And this is gonna shrink more and more. I mean, this is already a bit like that. And I did my chains with the smaller hook. But anyway, all of this is gonna disappear when we do our borders, so not to worry. So I'm gonna do my chains um, with this smaller hook and I'm just gonna do maybe 15 stitches. So 15 chains, sorry. Okay, so I have 15. Let's do one more as a chain up. And then I change to my final crochet. So if you decide to do your chain with a smaller hook, you don't have to, if you do chains that are quite tight, you don't need to change. But I, in general, do chains that are quite loose and then everything else, all the, um, all the rows, I do them quite tight. So I kind of need to do this, but you don't have to. So for me, this second row is usually a bit painful because my chain is uh, much smaller, but it just, it gives me a nice result at the end. So the first um, row, we're just gonna do it as normal, just normal slip stitches. Okay, so I've done uh, all my stitches except the last one. So you don't have to do it, but I like to also do the last one and the first one of the next row with a smaller hook, only because 
my hook, the one that I'm using at the moment, is so large that it just creates big holes, like as you can see there. Really, I should have done uh, that first stitch with the smaller hook. So I did one, last one, then chain one, turn around, and then in here, just on this second row, we're gonna grab the back loop. And there. So I'm gonna chain, sorry, I'm gonna change to the big crochet and I'm gonna continue doing only slip stitches in the back loop. It's a bit slow at the beginning, but as uh, you do more rows, it gets uh, much faster and much easy. The other thing is, um, because I'm just starting, this is a bit tight, but the idea is that you do the slip stitches quite loose. So it gets easier and easier to grab the stitch. Okay, so I'm on my last stitch, so I've changed to a smaller hook again. The other thing that I do is that on my last stitch, I start grabbing both loops, which uh, is a bit more painful than just grabbing the back loop, but um, again, I think it leaves a much smoother edge, so that's why I grab both. Then I chain one, and then in here, we start grabbing the front loop of the stitch. So you have the front loop and the back loop. Front loop, back loop, front loop, back loop. So in the row before, we grab the back loop, right? So in this row, we're gonna grab the front loop. And uh, what I just said about grabbing both loop, you only do it at the end of each row, if you want. You can just grab uh, the back loop only or the front loop only, depending on the row that you're on. Uh, but I just do it because I like um, the edges that it leaves. So now we're only gonna grab the front loop of the stitch. And you can see already the effect that is leaving. So by grabbing the front loop, you're kind of isolating the stitch and you get that nice effect that looks like a like knitted. Okay, I'm on my last stitch. So now I've grabbed my smaller hook and we need to see where we have the two loops. So they're there. So it does get a bit painful sometimes to grab them. So I just grab a yarn needle and kind of stretch them a little bit. So it's not too hard. And there. So this is front loop and back loop. My two loops. And then we just did a front loop, so now we need to grab the back loop. You can kind of see already how this is gonna look. So this is the back of the work. So nothing special and this is the front and you can already see that knitted look that you get so it's kind of easy to know which um, row you need to do like if you need to grab the front uh, loop of the back loop because when you're uh, in the back in the back of the work like this it means that you need to grab the back loop when you're in the front of the work you need to grab the front loop. So it's quite easy. And the other thing uh, to consider, so my 
even rows are here actually. So every time we do a row like this, we're gonna doing like the second row, the fourth row, the sixth row, and so on. And this is actually where you get that nice effect you actually created on this side. And then this is gonna be my uneven rows. So row number one, three, five, seven, and so on. Okay, so then we just continue doing slip stitches in the back loop. And I need to remind myself to uh, these stitches um, as loose as possible so it's easier to insert the hook. The rows are quite easy to count um, because you can just count this and every time you count one of these, it means that you have two rows. One, two, one, two. So, so far we have four rows and I'm crocheting now the fifth. 